you know? I, I want to interact with my environment more than any game has ever allowed us to do. But the idea of going through every door and every nook and cranny? Creepy, quiet, silent element. But it's just like, give us that freedom a little bit more. For one fucking game! Ooh, we're best friends with this person. It doesn't matter how much I want to play that one game, it's not gonna happen. Because, I mean, I mean it's just, but it's if, just but if, but if I knew... I'm Foisco. And I'm Link584. And you're listening to... The, the Podcast. Podcast! Hey guys, this is Foisco here. And I am Link584. And we're from... To Monitor. And this is Season 2, Episode 1 of our new podcast. Well, it's not really a new podcast, it's just Season 2 of our currently existing podcast. Exactly what he said. So how are we kicking it off? Well, today, I am really, really, really excited about the new Animal Crossing for the DS. Uh Uh-huh. Which is not out yet. I know it's not out yet, so um, I'm just going to satisfy my... my, um, Craving for it by talking about it. Exactly. I've been playing, um, what is it, Wild World for the Wii? No, that's City Folk. Because you go to the city. Wild World's for the DS, the first DS. This one that she's excited for is for the 3DS, New Leaf, which comes out in March, I believe. Right. So we got a couple months to wait. Right. Okay, so, um, well, Jordan here has been listening to... You mean Link584? Link584 has been listening to the Animal Crossing music every night when he goes to bed. And that gave me a wicked hankering to play um, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. And so I started playing, you know, a couple days ago today. And you know what I realized? Oops. Oh. I'm sorry, Oliver. <laughs> that was our, our guinea pig. Just so you're wondering what that crash was. I don't exactly know what happened, but he just rattled his cage. He's being crazy. Anyways, so what really grinded my gears, not to steal from Peter Griffin, but they have kitchen floors and walls and all these awesome things for a kitchen and bathrooms and what are you talking about? Living rooms. Can you be more specific? For like your furniture and your walls, like stuff that you can decorate your house with. In the 3DS, they have. No, on the Wii. In the Wii, they have kitchens. Animal Crossing. What do you mean? What do you mean? Can you explain it to me? I, f- I feel dumb. What do you What do you mean exactly? They have all of these items to decorate your house with. Okay, you just you mean like the ovens and stuff. Ovens, toilets, beds, couches, chairs, tables, lamps. You name it, they've got it. But what they don't have is a kitchen, or a living room, and a bathroom, and a laundry room, and a you know whatever. They give you like three rooms and and a basement and a top floor, and they help you expand your house, but. But you don't have actual, like, designated rooms. Like, why not? I mean, if it's all about creation and customization, and they give you all these items, and then, oh, well, I can't have one corner be a living room and one corner be a kitchen, because, you know, it doesn't... There's no dividers. Exactly. How do you have more than one wallpaper? Yeah, it's like, just imagine if The Sims had one floor that's just one room, and then a second floor that's one room. Well, that's not very And then a basement that's one room. In a real house, you have, you know, when you enter an Animal Crossing, it's like, okay, you, you're in the house, and, and boom, this is the biggest room in the house automatically. Once you're fully upgraded and everything, that is the place to be. It's a really big room. And they give you stuff that feels like it would belong. Like, you automatically feel like you're in a living room. We've just gotten accustomed to that idea. And some of them are wacky and zany. But this is your place to customize your stuff. But that would be great if you could designate certain areas not even necessarily like with dividers even but i mean tom nook when he has his store he has stuff that are on like little pedestals like they're they're designated areas saying this is this item and man oliver is beating up this cage he's rattled too because he he hates the idea that we have all this stuff tom nook gets to designate his store how he wants with a little creativity and you know we have the ability to uh, make art in the game to design clothing and umbrellas with the pixel thing and all that stuff. Why can't we have some sort of free range ability to maybe you to, to use these tools that are currently existing and modify them in a way that says, okay, let's say you're in your house and you're in your big room. Let's say for whatever reason they can't give us dividers to create other rooms. We should at least maybe be able to use a styli or something and say, okay, here is your room and enter like an editing mode. Kind of like the pixel art that you do when you're creating clothing and designate like okay i want this area to count as one area 
and this area to count as another. And so when you're standing over those areas and you put your wallpaper or floors over it, it only affects your selected area. So you could have, let's say, your big living room space take up half the area or three quarters of the area and then in the bottom right or upper right or wherever you want let's say you want to have like a little kitchen area you could separate that you could highlight that in editing mode and ha that have that be section two so when you're over there you put up your your floor and it only affects the area that you selected in editing mode it's so easy. You could easily use the features that are currently existent in the game and do it and do it this way. Yeah, but I want to take it a step further and actually have different rooms. I mean, it makes sense that when you start out, you have your one tiny room and an upstairs or whatever, you know, and then you build up, but build a kitchen, build a bathroom, build a bedroom, build a, you know, whatever. Like extensions. Extensions. Like Harvest Moon. Ooh, yeah. Harvest Moon, you start with... You're, you walk into your house and there's a bed and there's a TV and a rug. When you, in Harvest Moon 64, for example, you can purchase a kitchen and it adds a door that is part of your, you enter your house and it adds a door that wasn't there before. And it leads to an extension of your house. Really? And it wouldn't have to change like the way the outside of the houses look like. It would just kind of be like you walk into a square and then inside the square it's like poof, huge. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I think that adding something like that would make Animal Crossing even better. Because I love a lot of the kitchen stuff and I love a lot of the living room stuff, but I can't combine it both so that they all look good. I want to have more time to spend, more money. That's a... You know, more money, more loans to pay off. And, I mean, essentially, it, this game could never end if you had more and more and more rooms to complete. That would be great. You gave me a credit. You said you love the stuff. Well, I just realized, you know what? When it comes down to the kitchen and things like that, you know, there's, I think there's three different styles of toilet, which is weird. There's, like, a regular one, then there's, like, a yellow and a pink or something. It's weird. But, like... I, I remember the GameCube one, and I don't know if how many variations of all this stuff is, but I only remember in each game one type of oven, one type of washer machine or whatever and all this stuff. And I was thinking, you know what? Uh, they advertise in the latest game, you know, uh, City Folk, you go into town, and you can see what that month's you know theme is according to the Happy Academy. You know, you have all these different sets. You have the green sets, the regal, and all this stuff, and they're great, right? Well, that's all for these standard rooms. Now imagine if you had... Okay, these are all... I consider these the living room sets. They're the only sets in the game. But I consider these the living room features. Imagine if you had well, kitchen kind of... sets and, like, a miniature th you know, miniature ones. Like, imagine if you actually had, like, four different kitchen sets. You know, what if you had the classic china set and everything about the kitchen? Maybe you have marble tiles and stuff. And maybe you have classic kitchenware. Because in real life, we have you could also have like the cheapware, the people that have like plastic plates out, and a regular kitchen. Just imagine all the decorative purposes, I mean, uh, sets that you could create just for the specific rooms. It would blow up. It really would. And also, the one thing is, is that in the new one, I believe they said that you could um, share recipes with the villagers. Well, how the hell are you supposed to share a recipe with your fellow villager if you can't have a kitchen to cook it in? I don't. I, I haven't heard of that. Well, weren't you the one who was talking about that? No. Oh no. I thought it would be great to have recipes like Harvest Moon, and oh. I'm and I'm you know things like that where even if you don't want you know one feature at a time. But I mean, I just think the ability to have extensions would be the best, and you don't have to change how the house looks on the outside. At least not even that much. It could expand like maybe a tiny bit or something. But when you look at all these things, clearly you look at the house and proportionate size to your character. There's no way that that all literally fits in the huge living room and the and the second floor. You know that you know it doesn't actually work that way. It's like magic when you enter. It's like Harry Potter stuff. So you could just have the building get slightly fatter at every ex expansion. You know. You and don't it have... kind of does already. Yeah. You just make your lot, you know, it just hugs closer to your fence. That's all. 
that would be the biggest thing. And the ability to use the design tool, like I said, and maybe instead of, like I said, doing that, you know, having actual different rooms, it would be, it would be cool if you could maybe designate where these different rooms are. Like when you're, if you were to really build a house, and so, yeah, that would be actually really cool. So, say he adds on, you have the main room, and you get to pick your upgrade. Instead of getting a bigger first room, you add on a second small room, which is maybe, like, the same size or whatever. But, like, you go into this edit menu, and you put the door on the left, in the back, in the front, you know, wherever you want it. You don't have to have a second floor if you don't want to. It can all be first floor, second floor, you know? Exactly. That would be awesome i think that would be cool if you had it all on one floor that since uh the houses you know from the visual standpoint it would be cool if then because it's all uh, technically it'd be a longer house versus being a taller house maybe your house expanded into a second like lot you see what i mean so you could have in your town you could have a player who you know who has a really tall house and then you could have someone who has a one-story house, but it takes up two lots because it's longer, like schools and stuff, you know, like elementary schools. And you know how kind of you can you can have up to four characters on one thing? Well, if, you have, if you're playing it for the DS and it's, you know, your personal DS, you can guarantee that there's probably not going to be someone who's going to start a new file. So instead of having four different houses, you can take two houses and combine them together. Right. It could be like every time that you take up a second lot, it takes up where another house would be. So only so you could only have maybe three players instead of four, you know. And I think the idea of adding houses and, and, and uh, you know, taking them away would be a great thing if you are a, a single player. Because most people are playing this by themselves, going to other people's towns. You don't have, you, I don't think the majority of people are families sitting down, especially on the handhelds. I mean, if it was a Wii, I could understand that. Like, you know, like a family, you know, a family game, you all sit down, you all have your own character. But on a DS, chances are that the family is going to, you know, each child is going to have more than one DS. That could create so many different creations and possibilities and no house or no town would ever look the same. Ever. That would be so incredible. Yeah. You could put where you want people's houses to be, like the animals that come in. Like you could say, I want houses here, 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 and here. And, you know, they come and go. And you could have, like, you know, put the museum up here and the shop over here. You should be able to literally make your own map. Imagine all the customizable things. I think some of those are coming with the with the new DS. Well, I'm just so 3DS. excited. I want to talk about them all now. Well, the 3DS, I know that you go into town for Tom Nooks and stuff like that. But you have a thing, couple things like the museum and all that. And I'm pretty sure that, like, you build the museum or you put the placement, you know, because you'll be mayor. I don't know if you become mayor or if, or if you're moving into town because you've been elected mayor or what. But I do know that there's going to be more features such as that. Uh, you actually, for the placement of your own house, they got rid of the annoying system where there's four pre-placed houses on the map and you pick one. They've actually made it so Tom Nook or whoever it is, you know, follows you around. And you turn and talk to the person, and you say, "I want it here." And then above your character is where your where your house will be. And they they actually give you a preview mode and say, "Is this what you mean?" So in case you're off, you know, since it's on a grid, if you're accidentally off a little to the left or to the right, and you want to be picky about it, they give you a preview and say, "Is this where you want your house?" You start in a tent in the game, but they give you a preview of a house so you can know what it looks like in future expansions when your house gets bigger. And let's say you're next to a river. You start in a tent, you can see the river behind you. You have a second floor eventually added to your house and all stuff. It gets too tall, you can't see the river behind your house. You can kind of get a glance for the future of what's to come. And it's a simple and nice feature. So I think the ability to do ex extensions of your house would be the biggest change in Animal Crossing and one of the most welcome. I, I think it would be awesome. I, I mean, you could add benches and lights and lamps and roads and bridges. Why can't you add a kitchen and a bathroom? And why can't you go to sleep in your actual bedroom? Like, you just have that one weird bed up at the top of your attic where, you know, you have this, you know, bed. But then underneath it, you have your actual bedroom. That's just weird. 
and then it's also weird. The, you can't change the basement floors and walls. No, and you can't change the attic walls either. It's, so it's pointless. You can only change the one room. Two rooms. Two rooms. Two rooms. And one Two of them rooms. smaller than the other. What? How is that fair? I mean, seriously, I'm really excited for this new DS one, but Nintendo, you really have to get your butts in gear and create this game for me, and I will be, like, the happiest person ever. And the thing about the second floor, it's not even big enough to, like, if you wanted to have a set, yeah. if you have a set that you like, it barely just fits or it doesn't make it. it tell, you can't, like, move around and stuff. Talk you can't. about claustrophobic. So it's like you got to, it's more like your closet, really. It's it's more like a, a large closet. Yeah, do you know what's in my large closet right now? A cardboard box, a lamp, and a vacuum. Because you don't know what you want to do with it. <laughs> because it's so tiny, and I don't think it gets any bigger. Oh. And your basement can't get any bigger, which is silly. It, your basement should be as big as your main floor, um, at its biggest size. Because I mean, otherwise, where the hell is the foundation gonna go to hold up your house? It just makes no sense whatsoever. I think your basement is. No, it's not. It's not. Trust me, it's, it's a, not. It's okay. So maybe it's one size smaller than the maximum because the basement's huge. Um. A pr I was pretty sure it was, it was just big. But d having that medium room that's on the second floor, if you could pick that to be, like, on your first floor, I think that would be great. Like, since these are small areas, you could have a door, right? You say, okay, I want my door to be here. Well, I think it would be cool if it was all loaded on one map. You don't enter another room, and then it has to load. Like, I bet because the processing power, maybe uh, maybe that was the issue on the Wii. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it for for such a small game. That it seems like a place like the museum and all this stuff. You know, you you enter another room to get to the area with the fish and the bugs and all this stuff. It just seems like you could easily fit it all into one like loaded screen. Do you see what I mean? Like, it loads it all, and you walk down the hallway, and it brings you to this area or yeah, something. Like, yeah, yeah, I kind of I mean, see. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with I like the loading idea for the specific areas in the museum, but if you have your house, and you have this big medium thing, I could consider that like a, a, like a medium walk-in closet, and I'd hate to walk into another room and have it load and do that. Even though the loading goes just kind of like that, it's, it's just a little too slow for my taste. Because I could see putting that on the first floor or next to my bedroom, and putting all my favorite shirts along the walls and have it be a walk-in closet that'd be awesome but i don't want to have to have it load to do that yeah like you'd never go in it at you know it would defeat the purpose i'd rather see it while i'm in my bedroom oh i see what you're going for okay right All right right no walk-in there's a black thing in my on the wall i would go in there and it loads like it does in the museum and stuff just have it be like auto loaded i figure you can fit a whole town into one loaded screen i figure you can fit your house into one loaded screen i can imagine if you'd go upstairs that it would you know you'd have to load into a new screen which is fine going upstairs you know up downstairs but it would be still pretty awesome if you didn't have to deal with that too oh you could get rid of that too because it does you go up and then it brings you to the second floor or whatever, and then you can go up again. You know, what you could do is have it, you go up the stairs, and then as you go begin to go up it, the, the second floor begins to fade inward, and then the, the floor below is faded out, you know, to save power. It's kind of like a, it's like, kind of like a fog effect. What, whatever you're near is where you are, so when you're up at the second floor, you're there. Because they do it in, all, in a bunch of other games. Things like fog and loading and all this stuff. If you go above something or below. It just seems like there's some little features that would make the game better. Not to say that this new one isn't going to be bad. I'm saying the new one's going to be great. In fact, they're giving customization options uh, to paint your furniture. Do things that you couldn't do before. You could like, oh, this one is a mix of this color and this one. I can paint it to something that doesn't currently exist. Like you have the green set and you have the regal set and all this stuff. But you could say, I want this thing to be yellow with purple knobs on the bureau or something you can you can you can do it you can have more customization and you can put clocks on the wall finally but do we it. don't have kitchens oh exactly that's the biggest thing that i think we take away from this you've made a great extensions. game but make it better i know and we have to wait like four years at a time for it i know which is just far too long for these little upgrades 
I mean, come on, Call of Duty comes out with more stuff frequently. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. And those are just slight changes and stuff like that. Why can't Nintendo come out? I know Nintendo probably doesn't want to milk and push it, but I mean, you know, they put a lot of thought into well, it. But it's I mean, not every... milking and pushing it if they do what the fans want, you what, know? Why not every two years? Like, every other, you know, every four years you get a new console one, and every four years you get a new uh, handheld one, you know? I think that would be sweet. I mean, maybe that's what it currently does. But it just seems like it's far too few considering this is the year 2012 right now. We're ending it. And you look at it, and the first Animal Crossing came out, I believe, in like 2001, 2002. It's been 10 years, and we've had three games. We're coming up into next year. We'll have four games in 11 years. Huh. Maybe 12. It depends on what year it came out. Uh, if it was 20, 2001, it's 12 years. That's every four years you're getting a new game. Which isn't bad, but it just seems like for the game that it is, they need to add more stuff to do. Rather than to log in, you check the stores and do all the stuff, it'd be great to have more reason, you know, to, more things to spend on. More options that are the big expenses. Because more we have, places to explore. More places to explore and more big stuff to spend on because you do your house and it's like automatically you know that you're going to have four payments. Your first one, your first upgrade, your second, your third, I think is what it is. And then, you, you know, you have a couple town things, but they cost a buttload. But now you're going to have in this new one, buying lamps and stuff like this. I guess it comes from your own money. You got you fundraisers that you do fundraisers, you collect money from the villagers, but you know that you're gonna be one the most of foot in the bill. So that's one of the great things about it. But I'd like to see more things with the house. Cause that's really what it's about is your house. So I bet I bet you could come up with a good list of stuff. Also, you need I think, honestly, that if you are fishing or bug catching, and say you catch a monarch butterfly for the first time, it should say, this is your first time you've caught this bug, woo! And you know, okay, I'm going to go, you know, donate it. Instead of, you know, oh, have I caught this bug before? Honestly, I don't remember, you know? Because, like, if you've caught it, the same fish or, you know, bug a hundred times, you're like, oh, well, this will sell for some money, so I'll go sell it. But what if you don't, you didn't donate it and you thought you did and you have to go and click through all the menus and blah, 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 blah to find out if you did or didn't or try to donate it and talk to the owl a gazillion times. It's annoying. And so it would just be kind of a nice little treat to be like, oh, this is the first time you've caught your bug, this bug. I think Pokemon does that. I think when you're playing Pokemon... Something like a little Pokeball appears in the corner if you've caught it or not. It's like a little symbol that most people don't even notice to show if you've caught it or not. I, I'm pretty sure it exists. I just don't know what form it appears in. But something like that would easily work or a message like you said. See, that wouldn't be too difficult at all, I wouldn't imagine. No. I mean, hell, like I said, they did it in, in Pokemon. They just put There's this tiny little icon that appears to let you know if you caught it or not. If they did it in one of, the, if they did it in Pokemon, with over six hundred Pokemon, why can't they do it in their other own franchise that they own? I know, and I know that you guys have the fish and the book, you know, the the bugs and the fish books and all that, but it should, you know, you should just have a symbol, you know, because like I, if I catch something, I like to go donate it immediately, you know, but how am I supposed to know if I've donated it or not? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's exactly. Just, the fish book doesn't even fix help that. No, it just tells ask. you what you've caught. But so I mean, say I catch a zebra, turkey fish, you know, and it says, "Oh, this is the first time you've caught this fish." And I'm like, "Okay, I I can go donate this one." And then I catch another zebra, turkey fish, and it says it doesn't say anything because I've never caught it. I, I mean, I've, I mean, I've caught it already before, and then I know, okay, I only have to donate one. What's a zebra turkey fish? It's a bizarre, weird fish that's awesome. So it does exist? Yes. Okay. Um, and then also, um, it would be really awesome if fish had sizes and bugs and stuff had sizes. So say you caught a hammerhead shark and it was like, you know, 10 centimeters or something, you know, weird like that. And then you caught another... <laughs> it's a pretty small shark. Well, I know, but I'm just, you know... 
whatever, shut up. And then you caught uh, a hammerhead shark that was 11. You could go and donate the bigger one and take back the little one. And the bigger the fish, the more money it could go for if you sell it. That would be freaking awesome. And if you're going, like, for some for, for some of the bigger ones, this would be more noticeable. But, like, you go and you donate the bigger one or something. If you wanted to, you, you just, you can donate and you can replace what's in there. So if you have a really, really unusually sized fish or bug and you say, oh, okay, the normal hammerhead shark, let's say, is, you know, two meters long or something or one, one meter. Let's say it's one meter long and you happen to get one that is one and a half you're like wow that's a big noticeable difference you caught like this really rare and unusually sized like you could have maybe it's even slightly color different so if people come to visit your town they know that you caught the you know the big kahuna like the legendary version of that one like the like the shiny pokemon it's like you caught the uh you know the albino version that would be so awesome. Like, you you have all these regular fish, but then take it a step further, and you have, like, the rare version. And that would be so cool. Or put that in your house. Do you know how sweet that would be? Like, oh, I caught the albino lobster instead of having the regular orange bland lobster. Then you have the white lobster in your house. That would stand right out. Yeah, damn right it would. Do you know how awesome it would be to have an entire, like, albino museum? All they have Dude. to do is a retexturing or recoloring. Yeah, that would be it. They did it for all their Pokemon. In fact, uh, they actually have a 3D Pokemon game. It's not Pokemon Stadium. I don't know what it is, but they actually have it. It's like Pokemon Stadium, and you can battle and stuff. And in that, they have 3D animated models for all of the Pokemon. Which so They have over 500 Pokemon, or maybe it's for a past version, so that's like over 400 or something, right? Well, they have all the shiny versions in there as well, just in case if you have a shiny Pokemon. I'm thinking if they could do a double Pokemon list, they could do all the bugs and animals in Animal Crossing. It's the exact same thing, and there's not 400. There's probably only like 100 bugs, 100 fish. I mean, and, yeah. and, and the bugs, they're smaller, so you wouldn't even notice it on some of them. But maybe for the fish, you could have albino fish. Bugs could be right. Maybe you could have... A bug that has, like, a little, like, twinkle to it. Like, now and then, like, a little shine effect will appear. Or something. Because the bugs are a lot harder to notice. But for at least a fish, I think there should be all al albino fish. And well, and there could be something for the bugs. But what could you do for the fossils? The fossils. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, like... I bet if you complete a, a full fossil set, Ooh, you could oh. have a, a picture of what the full animal looked like in front of it. Or they could use that as a model and they could skin the whole thing. Yeah, that I was just thinking that. Like, you know, as soon as you're done or, you know, whatever. Or maybe you could come across like a, like a, like a frozen piece or something. Not well. I mean, frozen doesn't really make any sense. But like, you have pieces that are stuck in amber, so like you know, maybe they could chop away the amber, and then there would be like this dead, preserved dinosaur. Yeah, they could come up with something. Is the bottom line though? Like for and each different type of thing, fish, bugs, and skeletors. Skeletors, fossils. <laughs> fossils. They couldn't really do anything for paintings though, but. Paintings, you could come across. Um, golden frames or something like in luigi's mansion and you have the boss ghosts depending on how many sucks it took up to vacuum up the boss ghosts you are given a different uh frame in your gallery of ghosts that you've collected if you got the boss completed in one to two sucks or you know hits i guess i'll call them instead and if you got the boss in one to two hits you got a gold frame around your painting if you got it between three to five, you got silver. Anything more, it was uh, ruby or whatever. So you could tell how good you did if you have all gold frames. So maybe for the paintings, there could be some sort of like a, a trim difference. Maybe all the paintings in the game could come with a silver frame. And if you, fa if you could come across a rare one, that's in a gold frame. 
Dude, we just we just made like the awesomest Animal Crossing ever in like I don't know, twenty five minutes ish. Well to no more. No th- half an hour. We've been going for thirty two. One we started a couple minutes late. Because oh, yeah, of okay, editing so about pro- a half purposes. Hour. Yeah. All right, Nintendo get to work. Damn it. So extensions and you know, and having the ability Rarities. to you know, the the idea of having the extra lots taken up and all that stuff. Uh, the uh, the rarities about all the different bugs, painting sauces, all all four groups Ooh. have been covered, and then what was the third thing that we covered? Um, paintings. Well, that um, comes with more it. places to explore, and did, I just kind of did, thought of this. Did we cover more places to explore though? Well, we didn't uh. cover it, but we we mentioned on it. But I just got this one quick thing. Okay. You can buy paint at Nook Shop, and instead of picking your house color. I mean, you can pick a generic color like red, white, blue, green, black, whatever, you know? But you should be able to take two colors and combine them. Dude. Mint. Yeah, because he really does have a limited selection for whatever reason. Because he only has, like, eight basic colors or something. He has, I think he has ten, eight to ten basic colors. But then you go to the Mabel sisters and they have... All these different hues and variations. They and have like color palettes. They have sixteen different color palettes. On on each color palette, they all are different colors. Like no, there's no duplicate from one color palette to another. There's some of them that be similar, but they're different. So in the end, it's sixteen colors per I think sixteen palettes, resulting in over three hundred different colors. Yeah. And Tom Nook just says like eight. Why? Exactly. Let us let us mix them. Exactly. That would make a lot of things. I mean, you can paint stuff in the new one, so there's no reason why you couldn't paint your roof mix colors. Maybe you know? maybe we can. We just don't know it yet. But more, I think the map should be bigger. Yeah, way bigger. You should have more towns to explore. You should have an island to go to. You've got the ocean. I mean, we do have an island. Well, but one. not. Well. Yeah, but I mean, no, yeah, we don't a need a town that. and a city, and you know, there you just also need to make it easier to visit a friend's place. Like they have to have the door open and be online at the same time, and this and that. I mean, I suppose I could go and you know chop down all their trees if they weren't online. But you could make it so that you know, like a blacklist and stuff. Like a town has rules where you have to follow those rules. Like oh. Friends can't chop down trees. Friends can't take my fruit. Friends can't... It's like a Minecraft server. Yeah, like, I mean, why should I have to wait for someone to be online to go view all of his different stuff, you know? That just seems wicked cumbersome, and it's hard to coordinate, and it's cumbersome, okay? So, instead, have you can leave your doors open, or you can leave them closed, even if you're there... Or if you're not, and you just need to have a certain set of rules that if you have a list of rules and you can check all the rules that you want to apply to your t- your town. So if I didn't want someone to come in and take my fruit, then I could say, no, my fruit is mine, don't touch it. Or you can't plan anything. Or you can't cut you, down anything. You can't touch you anything. You can't use tools, period. Exactly. Like, you know, you're, you just, you can't pick up anything. Maybe you can fish. And catch bugs, but you can't destroy or add anything unless I. You can't donate, you know. If you wanted to do it all yourself, you could have all. You could have customization options. This big checklist, and you just boop, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, how hard would that be to just add in a couple rules and allow people to come and go as they please? I think that would be incredible because what if you know. One person just isn't on the same time as you. You want to go explore their stuff and see what's going on. I think you know? part. I think part of it has to deal with like, their world isn't le- le- saved onto a server like an MMO, like well, so. May, so, but I bet they could come up with something though. I mean, Nintendo's a very powerful company. Yeah, no kidding. It's one of my favorite companies, but. I just have a lot of ideas, and I wish Nintendo would hire me so that I could be like, I've got this great idea! I think the bigger map is a big one, though, right off the bat. Like, the number of villagers you can have, you know... Is it's it a, fair? It, it's, it's a comfortable amount, but the town becomes too small, it seems like. Like, I've, like oh. the original GameCube version of the map was a grid, 5x5. Five five. Now, they just got rid of the grid, but it's still the same size. 
And what they could do, instead of a 5x5, five five, if they made it um, a 6x7, six it would be huge. Or a 7x7, seven seven, even a 6x6 six six would be appreciated. A ten by ten? No, that's way too big. Because when you think about it, a 6x6 six six is bigger than a 5x5, five five, and the idea, it's automatic. A 6x6 six six is 20% bigger. I don't care. That's a lot, if you think about it. But, I mean, I think that would be right there is it would be a comfortable place to be because if you were to do it as a grid system, 5x5 five five is 25, a 6x6 six six is 36. Sorry, it's not 20% bigger. I thought it was 30 for whatever stupid reason a second ago. It's actually about 45% bigger. Okay. That's almost, that, that's a huge amount. A 6x6 six six would be comfortable. Okay. All right. And how about this one? And I, oh, God, it went out of my brain. Oh. Suck it back in. I'm trying. I'm Brain tr suck it. You were talking about sizes and yada, yada, yada. And I was thinking of something and it was totally awesome and now I can't remember. Well, I do know you wanted to bring back paintings. Like in terms of, I mean, signs. Signs. Yeah, signs. Oh, oh, thank you. You reminded me. Signs. I want to put up a sign that says, oh, you know, if I say I want to take all these pine trees and put them in one corner, this is the pine tree forest. Why can't I add a sign that says that? I mean, you could walk up to it. You might not be able to see what it says, but when you click on the sign, that's what it says. Pine tree forest made by Foisco. You know, like, why can't you do that? And I know that you could make signs with the pictures and stuff, but what I want is, like, the signs that you have where a house could be planted and you go and click on it and it reads stuff. That's what I want. And also, the point where I forgot, in the Wii version of Animal Crossing, for whatever reason, if I just haven't discovered this, please correct me, but it seems to me that I can no longer do jobs for the villagers. I'll talk to them a thousand times, and none of them will give me a job to do. So, what's with that? Oh, I think I know why. Why? Because you've been hacking. No, even way before I've been hacking. That's a whole other story. I'll never tell about that one. Well, it's a pretty simple story. You're just advancing time while, and goofing around while you're waiting for the 3DS. Well, yeah, kind of. But no, that's not the point. When I was doing it every day for like two months, I could not get a villager to give me something to do. I'm like, wow, this sucks. I'm bored. Why not? Like, <sighs> I don't know why not. I think that's just a bug. Because I've never had that. And, and I played for like seven months on and off, and I never had any problems. <sighs> I don't know. I think you just exhausted them, or they, or they probably just hate you. They don't hate me. They love me. I come up with awesome names for them. No, you don't name them. You come up with catchphrases. Catchphrases. The catchphrases is cool. I like that you can do that. I like that they wear their, your clothes, that you sell at the Mabel Sisters and the umbrellas and stuff like that. But I just, I would love to see a village be bigger. And I'd also like to see, as mayor, the ability to limit how many villagers could be in there. Oh. Like, if you wanted to have... If you have this huge map, like, let's say a 6x6, six six, I would want to see more villagers, too. But at the same time, i like to know what the proper amount is, because, you know, if you have 15 villagers in there, that's a lot. But I'd love to see it pop be populated uh, in a bigger map, so it's still, you know, people are spaced upon, you know, spaced around, so you could have maybe 20 people in, on the map or something. But I'd love to see, like, this is as mayor some customability options such as i want i want to have the huge map but you know what i really want to only limit 10 villagers to the map so i could have this huge forest area that i could create or i want to have the maximum number 20 or something um but then on top of that but say okay as mayor you know how in the original gamecube version you all had four houses in the middle mm -hmm. as human players yep imagine if you could create like a mini cottage for the villagers there could be a part on the map where maybe you have, like, an area like in the GameCube one where you had four buildings all together. Like, imagine that as a cottage, but with, like, six houses or something. And say, here's a designated area for, or, oh, I'll get to there in a second. But just imagine, like, a little area where all the, there's pre-planned housing for the people that move in. As mayor, you could choose it, like, kind of like a real, like a real world. People don't, it's, most people don't build a house. Most people go and move into a house that currently exists on a road, you know? So imagine if you could, as marriage, even if you never used it, an option where you could have pre-planned housing. 
And that brings me to one more thing about about being mayor and pre-planned housing, is imagine if you had, you had these little cottage areas and all stuff. Well, what if you had like a little area with four houses, like you did in the GameCube one? And let's say you know all the you kept the regular system right now, where villagers just move in willy nilly at random, you know, to wherever they want on the map. But imagine if you did have like a couple houses, like in the GameCube one, where you actually had regular villagers that moved into town temporarily like a hotel or a motel people a couple villagers might stay for th like for like three to seven days on vacation to your town maybe have a step four houses maybe have like a little hotel or a little bed and breakfast place where a cup where a couple new villagers come into town and they move there for vacation uh, for three to seven days and sometimes one might actually decide to permanently move in. I think that would be awesome. But also, going back to where you said that we had, um, um, where you could decide I only want 20 people or, you know, 10 people to live in my town. It can just be one of those rules that you can, you can preset before you start the game, which can be changed at any time that you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So say you only want one person or n no people because you're too busy creating or you want, you know, the maximum number, you know, you just set that in your rules, and, you know, Ooh. and, 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 um, okay, uh, <laughs> you distracted me. Sorry, because I, I thought of one additional note about the, about the hotel. Okay, well, say your additional note, but, like, yeah, then we'll just go right to So you. that you don't forget right. it. Right, the additional note was, I think that would be one of the better reasons about having people move in, because, I hate it when a villager just pops up and you're like, hey, someone just moved in. I didn't see you checking out this place at all. You just trust Tom Nook. Well, yeah, well, we just trusted uh, Tom Nook. Uh, we just moved in with no money at all. But I mean, I'd love to see it like, hey, they're moving in at the hotel and then someone from the hotel, the, you know, let's say there's four people checking into the hotel. One of them does decide to move in permanently, you know, because they're somewhere on vacation. But then it could also be a mix of who's on vacation and who's checking out the town. Because when you actually decide to move somewhere, you check out the houses. That is very true. And, you know, back to the one point is um, I, I would love to see more interactivity between the villagers. Like, I've seen maybe one or two people at most in... Um, what A group. Are they? The what? A group, like talking to each other. No, um, in that one coffee place... Where um, K.K. Slider comes oh, to sing. Oh, with Blathers? No, Blathers is the museum guy. I think because oh, that one right. guy's a pigeon. Oh, but like they come in for the coffee, you never see anyone. You Yeah, you never do. You never see anyone in the museum. You never see anyone in the town office sending mail. You just, like there's just nothing. They're all just walking outside or... In their house. And, and, and they're in their house and then that's it. And you might get that once in a blue moon where they're drinking coffee. Also, also, we have timers in the game, a little orange timer. Why can't, I mean, okay, the other day, I went and go, went to go talk to a villager, and she invited me to um, play a hide-and-seek match. Why can't I set up those hide-and-seek, and I go find people, say, hey, do you want to join? And they say yes or no. Like, why can't I function something like that? That would be cool. Like, I mean, why can't I create a festival? have a group of friends why can't i invite a friend over it's always oh hey have me over or hey come on over Ooh, create a festival you know what would be cool is if you could create a festival now this would be really hard to do of course but i bet you could come up with a bunch of like variations of these different things where you say you could create a festival you choose what day of the year you want it to be and they give you a list of different like whether it be options. keywords or options, whatever it is, right? It's it's a little vague, but not firm. And you say, it's kind of like filling out a questionnaire to find out your personality type or what kind of fish you are or something like that, you know, <laughs> where, you, where you put all this stuff together and whatever your answers were, they actually have pre-programmed maybe like five to ten different festivals and you kind of pick the answers or whatever and, and it eventually lines up to equal, you'll get the whatever festival. Like maybe you'll the cooking the, festival. Like, like so, your town could have the cooking festival. 
right? But you only get one of these, maybe two or something during the course of the year. Whatever it is, you unlock them according to some personality questions that maybe you're asked when you're on the bus or train or whatever when you come in and Rover talks to you. Maybe he asks you some, some additional questions that determines what your town's your town's specific festival. Because I've never... Uh, you have all these different things like Christmas and whatever. And you have the fishing thing. But your town itself doesn't have a festival representing its town. Like we here in our area, we have Old Homes Days. Old Homes Days, whatever it's called. You know, that's our town's thing. We have a town festival that unites our town and I think a couple others. I would love to see a personal town festival based upon some personality options that you answered. And also, the pets or the animals in Animal Crossing have birthdays, but I don't think we do. No, we do. We do? Yeah, and your mom sends you a gift. In fact, if you're really oh. nice to villagers, they'll send you gifts too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. But I mean... They have birthdays, we have birthdays, but you know what? They tell us their birthday. We have, if you don't write it down, you'll never freaking remember. So I'd love to see like a personal planner or something within our menu that does all the birthdays for all the ones that you've actually unlocked, like a game of Clue, and then you write it down. Like a journal, like they have in um, in uh, Harvest Moon. Right, you have a little journal. Dude! Why not have something like that? Say, hey, oh, but I they found do out. put it up on the bulletin board. That the birthday's coming out? That, yeah, it's so-and-so's birthday today, but I mean... But it, you have to check that every day. But it'd be nice to plan ahead. It, like, find out little personality things about the current villagers that are in the town. Like, some, maybe... Some, like, really like certain furniture. Maybe one villager would be like, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday in two days, and they like this kind of stuff. Like, another villager says, hey, we're gonna throw us a party for this guy. Bring a gift. Oh, that's a great thing. Like, I, like oh... Um, a villager here, let's say like this person's in, this person's birthday. Let's say you found out it's a birthday, right? Or you found out through a villager, right? Well, this would be a great thing if you said like, okay, I know that Jeff the squirrel likes the green furniture set, right? And he is missing certain things from the set. And if you give him a piece of the green furniture that he's missing, he will really appreciate it and like you even more compared to if you just got him. A green couch that he already has. He'll love it because you get you'll get like you could have you, you could, could actually, have you could you could have secret friendliness points, kind of like in Harvest Moon. There's different heart levels with all the girls. Yeah. You could have certain. You could have uh, something like that for all the like, villagers. You could have like a little gauge in the bottom right or something that represents them. And you like depending on how much they're smiling or something or whatever. You could have like a little gauge, and. If and you, you get could... something for their if you don't get them anything for bir their birthday if you don't talk to them at all on their birthday. If you logged on, if you logged on and did not talk to them on their birthday, you get negative points. But if you talk to them and don't give them a gift, you're standard. If you give them a gift that is not something that they're traditionally, you know, whatever, like the green set, you get like plus one secret points. If you got something from the green set that they already own, you get, you get plus two. If you give them something they don't own, it's plus three. And the best thing I like about that's not explored that often is in City Folk, if you do get them something that they don't have, they sometimes will put it up in their room. And I'd like to see more of that, because they don't do it that often. Exactly. And I was thinking of this, too. I, I'm so glad that we're on the same page. But maybe if you get them to like you a lot, you could have, like, a wish list of all the things that you want. And if you get them so high that sometimes they'll send you something like that, you know, they'll get something off your wish list, but only if they like you, like, mm. super tremendously awesome like your best friend type thing yeah you know? like you achieve best friend status that for their birth for your birthday they'll really treat you yeah like only save it for something like your birthday but like you, you find out stuff about them they should be able to find out stuff about you exactly i mean that's really what would keep people playing because honestly once i've collected all my furniture and paid off all my debt and you know i'm bored New game, you know? And then I never touch that game again. So this way, with Nintendo always having their, you know, oh, this is a gift from Nintendo. You know how they give out those sets? Yeah, every you month. Know, yeah. Whatever. Like, it would be totally awesome if, I mean, y people would be on to actually be around for those Nintendo, like, functions. You know what I right. mean? Because by the time, because I haven't been playing. Because, I mean, I mean it's just, but it's if, just but, if, but if I knew that I could build up the friendliness level with the villagers, because it almost seems like they almost say the same thing after a while. 
and that nothing's really happening anymore. But if you knew that they all had different levels, you'd be trying to keep their levels up because what if you go away for a period of time, the levels could go down again. So you have to constantly be interacting with, with, with the people. So you'd be doing your best to interact with the ones that you like the most and then... And if they, if you actually have a friendship with you, they'd be less likely to leave. But you should also be able to have an option to maybe, oh, well, I don't really like you. Well, if you don't like me, then I'm going to move away. Yeah. You should be able to kind of treat your neighbors like crap, which actually sounds really bad, but there's a better way to do it. But then have people that you really like. Like, say, for an example, um, Tipper, the cow, versus... Um, um, Tom the cat. I hate Tom the cat. I love Tipper the cow. So maybe I can be all kind of like, well, you know, I don't really care. You know, when they ask you a question or they talk to you, you kind of give them a negative thing and they're like, oh, well, pff, nobody likes me, so I'm going to move away. Yeah. And you actually kind of push them out. And then there's, oh, well, I'm thinking of moving away. And you say, no, don't go. And they actually don't go. You know, it would be cool, too, is if you had a character let's say i logged on and went into your world and let's say we both let's say i was working on status with them too and i had what if we both were like uber best friends with this person right but i have to go to your town every time to see them right maybe they'll be inclined to visit. go on vacation mm -hmm. and visit and stay in the hotel yeah and uh, and maybe i'll and that maybe what they'll maybe what will happen is he'll um send me a letter or something and say hey link you know I'm going to be coming to your town, uh, you know, since we're, so, you know, if you're medium friends, they'll stay at the hotel. If you're but super if you're friends, super friends they'll, stay they, with you. they'll stay with you. That, we're so there on the go. same page. And then, here's one of the things is, so if they stay at the hotel or whatever, you know, they'll, you'll, you'll wake up, you'll play your, you'll log onto your game, they'll knock on your door, they'll be knocking on your door. You know, you go and you and you open the door for them and and welcome them and the men and say, hey, it's nice, to, nice to be here in the town. Maybe you could show me around if it's their first time. You could show them around and say, here is the museum. Here is whatever. Kind of like you know, get acquainted, or you say, hey, you know, thanks for uh, letting me stay. You know, every time you go back home, he'll they'll be in your house. But it, I think that would be great is to have temporary vacations where they I come over. I think that would be really cool. And also, I just kind of thought of this, but we've been talking about, um, you know, different things and the mayors and build this up and our houses in, but we never talk about nooks or the Able sisters. Like, we spend more money, we pay off debt, the, the, the debt, and um, nooks gets bigger. Well, what about the Able sisters? You can create pro designs. Say you put out a design that your entire town absolutely loves, and they go and they actually spend money and maybe you can see it as the mayor this time and you can donate to the different stores but so the able sisters will get bigger that they'll become some big designer instead of some little pop shop well, kind of thing or even just a medium store something to give them a little growth because i don't want them to be like the big rich expensive you know really big store that's in the city i know they're but sweet, i'd love to but... i'd love to see like they look it's almost like they're in a shack it's so small i'd love to see them get maybe like tom's second tom nook's second store Something that's a nice medium length, and you can go in there, and I bet it would be great because they're a big part of the towns and everything. That they should have like a special crafts day. Yeah, and get them more involved. Like do other crafts too. Like that would be cool if you could, you know, like even if they don't do anything and they just joke around about, you know, maybe what they could do is they could have a crafts fair and you could all be like you could have like a sewing mini game or something that's only available during the festivals. You know, you could have this crafts fair, whatever it is, and you do, like, crafting mini-games that are only available during this time. And you make things like necklaces and all this stuff, and they say, who made the most innovative or creative, whatever the theme is. There could be a couple different themes, creativity, perfection, whatever. And you could, you and a couple other villagers or whatever, you could compete in a contest, just like the fishing contest, and whoever the winner is gets a special crafts fair item that you can only get at the crafts fair, just like you can only get the other things during like the holidays and festivals. Like, you can get a model of, um... Of, Their store. Like, the town hall. Yeah, like, you, yeah. Yeah. And you can get models of Nookingtons and, and, um... Maybe that's how you earn it. That Yeah, that should be how you or, earn stuff like that. And then there should be, like, a place where you can actually put it, like a shrine to the town. Like, maybe in the museum they add a second, you know... 
special town items. Exactly. Like, you know, you go in and you can put this in there. I mean, you could take it out at any time, but it would be a great place, like, in the town hall or center, you know, to... Um, to show the stuff off and maybe this is where all of the you know townspeople like to come and inter you know i mean uh, interact with each other you know they have a place to gather to yeah and even if that didn't ha- if that they didn't make that at least have i think two things to, to se- i'd like to separate from that is one is have it so during these special things like i bet the craft trick at the mabel sisters involved be able to be- expand their store just a little bit because they're open really late too they're open until like two a.m. It's ridiculous. They really, they really bust but their the butts. Hours. And uh, but these special items that you're talking about, I think, should be obtained in very unique ways. Like you have to build up exceptional friendships with these people, and you have to have special events. Because apparently, in City Folk, there is an actual mini uh, storyline type thing that can happen. But you need to have the. It's a. It's there's only one thing like this in the game, and it's really unique, and it's. You have to have spent a lot of money, and you have to have s- certain items to do this. And it's extremely weird and that there's only one thing like this in the game. But, I mean, in Harvest Moon, for example, you have these events that you have with the various women. But some of them require you to do certain things. And they say, okay, build up the levels this high, and then once you do, during the summertime only or something, you have to go and see if this girl is in this map during this you know during this time from like you know 8 a.m to like noon or something sometime only in the summertime with this heart level you know and say okay then you go there and you get a special event but but they have other but they have all sorts of these other events planned in for depending on how many heart levels and what time of the year it is and all this stuff they should have special events like this for the people that really make the town the town the ones that are there like tom and and, and the able sisters and you could really have this special event, like maybe you find out something about their past or something, about their rough childhood, and then the fact that they really opened up to you in a really emotional way. They give you, you know, the Able Sisters, uh, like like the like their pearl necklaces or something that was given from their mother. That could be the representation, like the model houses and all that stuff. That could be their thing, you know. They all have special items that you can really work on for these people that have been such a staple to the towns or the cities Mm -hmm. um i was just thinking of this too and i know that it's called animal crossing because you're a human who comes across animals but maybe you in the new game you could actually pick a model of a particular animal that you want to be pick your colors and Um, have an animal character that would be nice i mean because you have the me's you can use the me's but I mean, what if you want to be a monkey or a cow or a horse or a bird? You they know? can dress up all the same. Because are you you? I mean, you. So I mean, why not? It's programmed in already. I know. Why can't we be an animal? I mean, I know, Animal Crossing. You come across animals. Well, I don't think it's because you're a human coming into an animal world. I think it's because of all the animals. They're all crossing each other's paths. It's because of all these different. I don't think it has anything to do with being a human. Because in fact, in the first well, one, in the first one, you have horns. Really? Yeah. Huh. You're not human. So that's well, cool. then why don't we have animal models, you know? We could pick the colors and you could really just change so much about yourself and about the game. And I think that would be... Even if it was just a few choices. The most incredible thing on the planet. Yeah. Even if it was just a few generic choices. And you can't maybe change much about your face or how you look or something. Just a, a generic type thing. It would just add a level. Yeah, you could all do it during the train ride or the bus ride in because, I mean, you're already asking, you know, questions about are yourself. Are you a boy or are, are you, you a girl? girl? You know, maybe you say, oh, well, you're the prettiest human. It's like, I'm not human. And it's like, oh, well, then what are you? And then you just pick from the list. That'd be so easy. Why not? There's a lot of good options here. I think, I think Nintendo, I think we should just send this whole audio thing to Nintendo and just be like, make this game. I know, we, we're, we're like an, an hour mark right now of all these different ideas. And some of these are huge. They're not just tiny. I know. We're good at this. We need to go work for Nintendo. If you took all these things together and put them in 
at once, you really would almost have like a whole new game, or it would just it would just automatically make everything like it would just I be would, so incredible. Like when they like they keep adding these subtle things, like oh, you get to be mayor and you get to choose these lights and all stuff. That's a good. That's a good. That's uh, a good that's, start. That's a good bell eater. That's something exactly what we needed, but it's like. It's not enough. Not enough. You need some of the other things, like the interactions, like having the things like, you know, in Harvest Moon, the the building up of friendships, adding more dialogue. There's get a bunch of people to add a bunch of dialogue based upon a bunch of scenarios and just focus on the writing. That's it. Because they only say like two sentences at a time. But I mean, just focused on creating more levels of, of tiers of writing. And, um, but like I liked at Tom Nook's store, um, the, he had the, the specialty items. Where if you spent so many, whenever you spent like a thousand bells or a hundred bells or something, you got like one nook point or something. And he had all these rare items that you could only get with nook points. Like, they were so expensive though. He had like, he had like 12 different items and they were all really awesome. Maybe he had like 15, I don't know. But he, but they were on such an extreme range from like, this one costs a hundred nook points. This one costs ten thousand nook points. You know, this one costs, yeah. You know, like the jumps were just so ridiculous at some points. That I'm like, I wish that he had a specialty catalog that had like fifty items. Don't and and it was just ridiculous how wide the gap was for each one of these things. That I was like, I'm never gonna be able to get the top item because I want the I want the first second that because he made every item desirable. For, like, everyone that was ever a fan of anything Nintendo-like. Yeah. Also, speaking of the catalog, you can no longer order tools from the catalog. I have been jumping around dates and all this and kind of cheating so that I could get enough access to do what I wanted to do. And by the way, that's a total bitch. But why can't I just go into the catalog, order, you know, five axes for such and such a date, and then you know, go about my business with five axes because those break so easily. Like, ridiculously easily. So, I... It just, I just don't understand why I, I can't know. order tools anymore. I don't know. And let's see, another thing would be um, about the catalog. You know what uh, would be cool is since you have all this debt to Tom Nook and all this stuff, right? Well... It'd be great if after a while, you could build up your you do build up your friendship with Tom Nook. You actually level and you get discounts, but I think it'd be cool to have like the Tom Nook credit card or something. Where, what if you know like I I like the he does have some good stuff, but nothing in his store goes past like six thousand bills, you know or whatever. He has nothing that goes into five digits, or not really. I don't can't think of anything that does, or it was only a couple things that do. I've never seen anything in the store for like this is twenty thousand, this is twenty two thousand. Like everything's within the lower price range, right? So you could buy them out each day, pretty much from all the fishing that you do and all the, you know, foreign fruit that you do, right? So I'd love to see some items that eventually you look at and say, wow, that costs more than my first house payment. I mean, it would. I think it'd be cool to see a thing, but. You know, because you look at some of the stuff like the Able Sisters have the other sister in town that has the expensive furniture sets and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Each one's like 200000 so it costs like a million, two million or whatever to get like a whole freaking set. I'd love to see Tom Nick, though, compete with the other price ranges. Items from 20000 to 150 All sorts of items. Just like, boom, here they are. And I'd love to be able to have him to be like, all right, since you already owe money, I'd love to have, you know, after a while... After you spend X amount, he that gives you like the Tom the credit card, and if you don't pay back by a certain date, he taxes on like a real credit card. Say hey, you don't have the money. You want to buy the hundred and forty thousand dollar, whatever it is, maybe massage chair or something. It comes with vibrating feature or something. When you you, know, you you sit down on it, turns on, and your character you know, extends out. It's this real fancy chair or something, you know. But you don't have the you don't have the bells for it. You say okay. If you pay it in full within 30 days, there's no tax. But every 30 days that go by after that, there's going to be a 2% charge off of what it, off of the original price. You know, I'd love to see like the ability of adding the credit in the game to get an item some days. You look at that and you say, 
I don't have the bells for that sometimes. I, I, I think a credit system would be nice because it doesn't have to get complicated. It's just straightforward. Here's the Tom the credit card. Boom. I I like it. Also, um... <laughs> Easiest comment ever. I like it. Yes. I approve. Let's move on. Yes. Well, because there's no reason to talk about it because I agree. Um, the, um, I, what is his name? Lyle? The furniture guy? The otter. Yeah, who sets up, like, you the know... The Happy Academy. The Happy Academy. What you should be able to do is submit your house design... Be like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I get mails sent to me because I signed up for the Happy House Academy. Well, why can't I be like, have that, you know, what we were talking about earlier, that, that journal that, you know, you can set all your rules and you can have all your dates and whatever calendar that tells you when all the festivals are. Maybe this way you can have a second page or another whatever where it says submit my house, my design to the Happy Room Academy. To the Happy Room Academy, exactly. I mean, and then if you get accepted, you can go in to see Lyle, and there is your house. Well, I think an another thing, I would actually change this. I like the idea, but this is what I would do, is I would still have the the theme of the month, um, but I would have it. You know, the I would have this building be a little bit bigger now, and you have a second room, and using Nintendo's Wi-Fi uh, features. I would have it that you submit it and there's a second room that Nintendo picks every month that's user generated or maybe every or bi-weekly or weekly because there's so many people that do it. You know, if you have, you know, 800,000 sales in Japan for the first week. Wow. Oh, that I would mean, be even so awesome. So every week, you know, they have someone who just sits through and approves and you could easily pick someone. You could easily have a guy whose job it is to look and sift through some of them and sit down and say, okay, uh, I just sat through, you know. 200 entries for the past hour or something, and I picked 12 of them to last for the next four months. It'd be easy to have someone who currently works at Nintendo just take an hour and be like, okay, here we go. We got the next three months worth of every week changing out whoever it is, and I check it every couple months as people grow and all this stuff. But that would be a great thing. Have one for the Nintendo-themed room of the month, and then have one that's the user-generated theme of the month a approved. That would be freaking awesome. All you have to do is connect to the internet once. Yeah. Week. And it just automatically does it anyway most of the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Reds, by the way, needs way more stuff. Like, I mean, he has lots of really cool stuff and he charges a ridiculous amount. Because he's the black market. Right, but he needs to have more items. Not just more three for every week, you know? It's like, well, why do I have to wait another week to get three more potentially crappy items? Yeah, like, usually they're either crappy or there's something you could get at Nooks. There like, should be seven items. There should be seven. Well, anyway, I think this is a good place to stop for the podcast. Yeah, um, I think Nintendo should work on these ideas. Yeah. Go Nintendo. Anyway, if you think of more, we'll do another podcast. But for right now, I'm Link584. And I'm Foisco. And we're... To Monitor.